Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Welcome to using DDD Plus to predict in vivo API exposure levels, presented by Jim Mullen and John DeBella. A few housekeeping notes. For optimal video and audio connection, we highly recommend you close any additional web or streaming applications that may affect your internet bandwidth. We take your privacy rights seriously. And by attending this call or participating in the Q&A session, you are allowing us to contact you for follow-up. This call is being recorded for future playback on our website. Today's webinar will have lecture and a live demo followed by a Q&A session. Now for the Q&A session, you may ask questions via the questions panel on your control panel at any time. Don't be shy. We strive to have at least 10 minutes of Q&A. John and Jim are waiting for your questions, so feel free to post at any time. We know there are lots of ways to spend your time, and we appreciate you spending the next 60 minutes with us. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question. How familiar are you with DDD Plus software? Please select a choice. We'll give you just a couple of seconds. All right, and we're going to go ahead and close the poll now. It looks like we have a fair share of beginners and those not familiar at all, so you are in the right place. Now it is my pleasure to introduce today's moderator, Ms. Cheryl Ann Ayagata, Inside Sales Rep for Simulations Plus. Cheryl Ann, take it away. Thank you, Arlene. Welcome to the DDD Plus webinar. My name is Cheryl Ann Ayagata. I'm most pleased to have the opportunity to moderate this session. I wish to thank you for taking this time out of your schedule to learn more about our predictive modeling tools. I'll apologize now. Uh, you see I'm from Boston and it won't take you too long to figure this out by my accent. Um, when you reach out to Simulations Plus, I can help you with the so following software. DDD Plus, Membrane Plus, PK Plus, Gastro Plus, and AdMet Predictor. The majority of my focus is in the academic space. If you're interested in an evaluation trial, I can absolutely help you with that. In addition to today's webinar, tomorrow we'll be hosting another webinar, Modeling In Vitro Permeability with Membrane Plus. And on Thursday, we'll be doing PK Plug and Play. Uh, so hopefully you will have time in your schedule to learn more about these two model modeling tools. My apologies. A complete list of upcoming events may be found on our website. Um, so Simulations Plus, who are we uh, in the world? Simulations Plus is made of four different divisions. Um, they're shown on the screen here. Our Lancaster, California is our holiday, Hollywood division. The focus there is PBPK, modeling, software, and consulting. The Cognigen division is affectionately known as our Niagara Falls division, where they focus on PK, PD, modeling, and consulting. Dilly Sim in North Carolina is our fried pickle division. They do quantitative systems toxicology. And newly, um, just joining on board a couple of months ago, joined our organization is Lixoft, most known for their Monolix suite. And they, their nickname is the City of Lights division. We are 133 employees strong. A hundred of those have advanced degrees. Recently, we were named to the S&P Small Cap 600, and we thank you for helping us grow this organization. Uh, to achieve that milestone. Uh, academics, uh, if you're interested in a teaching license, go ahead and reach out to us uh, at information at simulationsplus.com. Uh, please allow me to present our presenters today. 
Our presenters this morning are Jim Mullen and John DeBella. Jim Mullen is a senior principal scientist. Jim did his graduate work at Washington State University and holds a degree in chemical engineering. Jim has over 15 years of experience in computational modeling in the pharmaceutical industry, spending 10 years at Bend Research before joining Simulations Plus in 2014. John DeBella did his graduate work in biomedical engineering at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. John has spent his entire professional career working with Simulations Plus in Lancaster, California. Very soon, John will celebrate his 17-year anniversary with Simulations Plus. John is one of those rare individuals who has enjoyed great business success while at the same time maintaining his world-class scientific acumen. It is my pleasure to introduce John DeBella and Jim Mullen. On to you, John. Well, thank you very much, Cheryl Ann, for the kind words, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the audience. Uh, as both Arlene and Cheryl Ann said, uh, we thank you very much for carving out time from your busy schedules today to, uh, to learn a little bit more about what we're doing mechanistically uh, to simulate uh, the in vitro dissolution and precipitation experiments. And more importantly, how these experiments and some of the results coming from DDD Plus are now being used to help inform Gastro Plus simulations. So what we're really trying to do is um, marry this in vitro technology from DDD Plus with the in vivo technology in Gastro Plus to um, accelerate our in vitro and vivo extrapolation activities focused on dissolution and precipitation kinetics. So just a little bit of, of background about DDD+. Um, it's a program that uh, we released uh, several years ago, and its initial focus in a vacuum is to simulate and model a variety of different in vitro dissolution experiments. And we'll talk a little bit more about the different models that we provide in the software coming up. Uh, the user base uh, is growing uh, at a very nice pace. Uh, the program is now utilized by over 50 companies globally, and more importantly, is utilized today by uh, scientists and researchers at uh, several regulatory agencies. The idea with DDD Plus is that you're going to be able to drill down deeper into your formulations and how they're behaving uh, in vitro. Uh, and we can model a variety of different dosage forms. Uh, we can model a variety of different dissolution methods and experimental assays and again, use that information to now start better informing the in vivo uh, physiologically based biopharmaceutics models or in vivo PBPK models that we're developing in Gastro Plus. And we're trying to again capture the in vitro in vivo extrapolation for dissolution precipitation kinetics and use that information to help us establish safe spaces, design spaces, or product specifications. So just briefly on the, the different applications of DDD Plus. Uh, the first, imagine there's a scenario where you've got a reference or target PK profile, uh, and you have developed a Gastro Plus model, and you have deconvoluted the in vivo dissolution of that product using Gastro Plus. We can use that deconvoluted profile as a target in uh, DDD Plus to then help us design an in vitro dissolution method that would allow us to match with those in vivo uh, dissolution data points 
for that reference product. So we can utilize DDD plus in a first step with gastro plus output to help us identify and design our in vitro dissolution method. Now, let's continue with this example. Imagine that we now have this dissolution method in place. We have our target uh, in vitro profile from the uh, deconvolution of the reference product. And now what we wanna do is design a test prototype. We wanna see what would be the impact of changing the content of excipients in our formulation or the impact of changes to particle size distributions or coding levels uh, around the formulation. We can then use the software within this, this optimized in vitro dissolution method to help us design the test product or test prototype formulation that would best match with that target reference profile. And then what we want to do is we want to see how does that information carry forward within the context of virtual bioequivalence trial simulations in GastroPlus. And so we have an opportunity to also see what would be the impact of changes as we start to consider scaling up the manufacturing of these formulations or, or test products. How much variance are we allowed in the content of different polymers or different excipients? How much variance are we allowed in the API particle size distributions? How does that variance translate into in vitro dissolution variability? And how does that in vitro dissolution variability translate into in vivo performance? And Jim is going to have a really nice example coming up, which talks about how we can use these results from DDD plus and gastro plus together to help us establish an excipient design or safe space. So that's just kind of laying the foundation of what we could potentially be doing with DDD plus, especially in combination with gastro plus. What are some of the things that DDD Plus considers as important for uh, setting up the models? And once we have those models set up, what, what types of outputs can we begin to uh, achieve? So first, um, we spent a lot of time focusing on the science with DDD Plus, and it is truly a state-of-the-art simulation program that is going to account for a variety of key mechanisms and processes that would be related to both dissolution and precipitation kinetics. So we are going to be allowing you to set up your formulation by defining the API, by defining any combination of formulation excipients, whether they are solubilizers, wetting agents, disintegrants, polymers, and for both the active and excipients, we can um, start setting up some of their physical chemical properties and formulation characteristics. So we will be simulating uh, as an output in DDD plus the dissolution time profiles, not only for the API, but also for any of the excipients which have been included. There are a variety of different dosage form models, which we'll talk a little bit more about coming up. And once we have set up that product or that formulation, we then have um, lots of details that can be defined uh, as it relates to the experiment or method itself. Uh, one of the, the key features that we often get uh, asked about is the ability to calculate um, the initial and dynamic uh, changes to the microclimate and bulk pHs as our active ingredient, as our excipients are dissolving, and depending upon the composition of the buffer in which we are simulating. So we are going to be using microclimate or surface pH levels to help us calculate 
local solubilities for the dissolution of API. And then once that material enters into the bulk environment, we'll be using the bulk or buffer pH to help us then calculate any precipitation effects. Uh, there, are, there is a very, very long list of different buffer recipes, which are predefined. A lot of these coming from the US and Japan pharmacopoeia, uh, also lots of new bioRelevant uh, recipes and media, which are defined as well. And then we have uh, introduced lots of different um, apparatus to the, to the simulation program. Uh, you have your choice between the standard compendial methods, uh, but we've also, over the course of the last few years, added uh, new experiments for uh, our new models for experiments like artificial stomach duodenum, uh, membrane flux, biphasic dissolution experiments, and so on. Now, when it comes time for you to set up the inputs into the DDD Plus software, what we've tried to do here is break up those inputs into several different categories. And for those of you on the, on the call who do have experience with Gastro Plus, uh, you'll see that this list is smaller, but it is more detailed and focused on uh, manufacturing properties, uh, formulation composition properties and your in vitro dissolution setup. Uh, so there's going to be a set of formulation specific inputs that need to be defined depending upon which dosage form you select. For the ingredients that make up the formulation, both the active and excipients, there are going to be the standard set of physical chemical properties. Uh, and then uh, also uh, in DDD Plus, there are opportunities to specify explicit salt types or salt forms within the software. This is a very common question that we get asked in Gastro Plus. How do we simulate for different salt forms, whether it's HCl salts or potassium salts or sodium salts? And in DDD Plus, we do take into account and consideration the impact of the uh, salt forms and how those salt forms and counter ions impact the dissolution of the API itself. And then with the dissolution method, setting up your standard condition, conditions, you know what type of experiment it is you're trying to mimic. And so it's just selecting from a few simple drop down menus um, what, the, what the conditions and the environment are going to be. You also have the flexibility to set up um, very complex experiments just to see if I better mimic the in vivo environment, am I able to somehow, some way, develop a more robust in vitro and vivo relationship or correlation. So that's the beauty of using a tool like DDD+. You have this flexibility here to be able to uh, project or forecast what would happen if I created or invested in a complex bioRelevant experiment on the uh, uh, in vitro dissolution, and does that allow me to better correlate to what I have deconvoluted from a reference formulation? Um, when it comes, just coming back here for a second to the ingredients section, um, one of the things that we have integrated within DDD Plus, which is similar to Gastro Plus, are some of the key machine learning models from AdMet Predictor. So you have an opportunity to take your API structure, your excipient structures, and load those into the software and have at least an in silico foundation that you can build upon uh, as you're collecting more and more in vitro data and or uh, compiling information from literature. So a lot of the inputs under this ingredient section can be initially estimated just by simply importing the chemical structure of your compound. And one important point that we'll, we wanna emphasize, and this will come up a little bit when we talk about uh, the case studies, is that we, while you can use DDD plus out of the box, importing structure files, 
uh, loading in your uh, basic set of in vitro information, you know, we do encourage you to also take any in vitro dissolution data that you might have captured for a product uh, or even simple in vitro dissolution data sets you've captured for the API by itself to use that to help validate and or optimize the DDD plus model. Once we have confidence that those inputs in the model are um, set up appropriately and have been confirmed uh, with some experimental dissolution data, then we can unleash the full power and potential of the software and start doing a variety of different simulation activities. The different formulation or dosage form models that we have are divided into several categories. So you can see here we have uh, options under immediate release dosage forms. Uh, so powders, solutions, which would be important for precipitation studies, uh, tablets, capsules, and uh, bead-coated IR products. We've uh, added in a delayed release option for coated tablets. Uh, so if something is, uh, if, if we have a coating around an IR tablet, which has some uh, pH dependency, uh, we can set that up in the model and simulate to see what would be the dissolution under different pH conditions. And then we have a variety of different controlled release dosage form options. Uh, polymer matrix formulations, bilayer tablets, uh, bead coating options. And then you'll notice at the bottom here, we've also extended DDD Plus to simulate more than just oral products. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have had a, a very long collaboration with the US FDA to develop uh, both in vitro and in vivo models for long acting injectables. And uh, we've added into DDD Plus some first options for being able to simulate the in vitro release or dissolution from LAI microsphere formulations. Uh, with regards to then setting up the dissolution method conditions, as mentioned, we have the compendial options, the basket paddle. Uh, also USP4 flow through options, and you can select whether it's going to be uh, opened or closed loop. And then we've added in some very specific or specialized bio-relevant type um, methods. Uh, we've got the uh, Pion micro disc profiler, and then you can see we've recently added the artificial stomach duodenum, uh, membrane and biphasic dissolution methods. And it's just simply selecting from drop down methods, uh, drop down menus here, uh, defining some of the uh, dissolution conditions for the experiment, and off you're running. Uh, continuing with setting up the dissolution uh, method or, or experiment. We've also made a lot of changes to uh, the multi-stage setup. And by multi-stage, we mean you have the opportunity to change the conditions of the experiment at whatever time point you want. So in this uh, screenshot that we see here, if our experiment is going out to four hours or 240 minutes, you can see here that we said the first phase of the experiment, the first two hours we're going to run in a USP uh, HCL, uh, 0.1 normal HCL environment with a pH of 1.2, where we have a certain instrument uh, speed and volume. And then at two hours, we're going to transfer the material into a biorelevant media, a FASF. Uh, buffer uh, with the same instrument speed but a little bit higher volume. And so you're able to mix and match between different buffer types, different instrument speeds, different volumes at uh, different time points. And this can be very uh, useful for when we're trying to design our experiments uh, to match up with some uh, deconvoluted 
in vivo release profiles that we've generated from GastroPlus. So once we've set everything up uh, as inputs, and that's going to be, again, the composition of the formulation, the active and excipient properties, the dosage form options. Uh, so depending on whether we're working with an IR, DR, or CR product, uh, setting up some manufacturing uh, properties, and then defining our dissolution method, we can then run a variety of different simulation types. And you can see here, we can track the changes in the in vitro dissolution versus time for the active and any excipients in the product. We can track and change, uh, track and simulate the changes in both the microclimate and bulk pH environments. Uh, we have the very powerful parameter sensitivity analysis mode where we can select any combination of parameters in the model, uh, define a range of values for each one, and have the program automatically run a series of simulations and output what would be the changes in the in vitro dissolution versus time as those parameters are changing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more here in a second about the F1 and F2 calculation engine. And then as I showed earlier, when we're thinking about setting up some type of um, design or safe space, uh, we have the virtual trials, uh, virtual lot to lot or batch to batch trial simulator, where we can see if there is variance in uh, API, excipient content, in some of the uh, critical material attributes in one of the uh, one or more of the dissolution method conditions, we can see how that translates into variability around the in vitro dissolution profile. And just continuing a little bit on that F1 and F2 calculation engine, um, what we can do with this is we can load in our reference dissolution time profile. And for all of the different formulation records we might have set up, if we have different records which correspond to different test prototype formulations, we can very quickly and very easily capture the F1 and F2 values. So we can identify which of these prototypes are most similar or dissimilar to the reference in vitro dissolution profile using the uh, generally accepted F1 and F2 calculation definitions. So this has been a, you know, a short overview of the different ways in which your peers and also regulatory agencies today have been applying DDD Plus to support internal research. Uh, I talk, uh, we've talked a little bit about the considerations in the uh, simulation engine with DDD Plus, what types of inputs are gonna be important from the user perspective, and once those inputs are defined, some of the different outputs we can begin to predict. What I'd like to do now is just pause briefly for a poll question. And as we take that poll question, uh, Jim is going to now take us through a couple of case studies as well. Arlene? Thanks, John. Did you know that we offer a very generous academic discount? Again, we'll give you a few seconds to answer. Your poll questions are coming in. I'm glad to see them. So thank you everyone for participating in our polls and our Q&A session, which will be coming up after Jim's presentation. And we're gonna go ahead and close the poll now. Okay, so good mix again. Jim, take it away. Thank you. Hopefully everybody can see my screen now. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, IVIVE for uh, precipitation here in DDD Plus and applications to uh, Gastro Plus as well. Um, so let me blow the slides up. Sorry about that. 
Um, so we'll be talking about itraconazole here first off uh, in a biphasic dissolution test. So itraconazole is a uh, lipophilic base molecule. Um, it's got, you know, three pKa's in the physiologic uh, range, you know, so it's going to be very soluble and gastric as it translates or transits, sorry, into the uh, uh, small intestine. It's going to then precipitate at physiologic pH. Um, again, uh, lipophilic, a log D of about 5.66 at pH 8, and then um, a low solubility, less than one microgram per mil um, of the neutral form and uh, highly soluble in the stomach. So in DDD plus, we have a biphasic dissolution model that allows the simultaneous prediction of precipitation in the aqueous phase. Uh, and then drug can be then extracted into the organic phase uh, through just diffusion through the um, aqueous boundary layer and the organic boundary layer. Um, the amount of drug in the organic uh, layer is going to depend on the partition coefficient, obviously. And uh, we hope this will lead to better in vitro to in vivo extrapolation for precipitation since we have an an absorptive phase similar to the in vivo situation. Um, on the bottom left, it just shows the interface here for DDD plus where you can enter in the organic volume, viscosity, density, diffusion layer thicknesses, and interfacial area of the organic and aqueous layer. Um, you can also set the organic solubility in the um, formulation tab or um, predict it based on the log P versus pH profile profile, log D versus pH profile, sorry. Um, so the data we utilized for this study is from Carl Box. Uh, he um, made this pro poster for AAPS in 2016, uh, where he looked at some ionizable compounds that didn't precipitate, some ionized compounds that do precipitate, and then some neutral compounds that also precipitate. And the experimental conditions here are 40 mils of phosphate buffer at pH 6.5 and the Sirius T3 um, instrument. 30 mils of decanol on top of, uh, of the aqueous phase is the organic layer, and then 100 RPM mixing speed. Drug, in, drug is introduced as a solution, and then it can then precipitate and or um, uh, you know, diffuse and, and partition into the organic phase. Uh, the doses were either 10 or 5 mg. So for itraconazole precipitation, we employed both the first order precipitation and mechanistic nucleation and growth model in DDD plus. We provide the same options in DDD plus as we do in gastro plus to do the calculations. And the optimization module in DDD plus allows you to fit the experimental data uh, versus time. In this case, we are fitting the appearance in the organic layer versus time um, uh, based on the precipitation rate uh, of the uh, solution formulation. So um, the drug precipitates quite rapidly. The precipitation time is 302 seconds. And, uh, and so, yeah, within 10 minutes, the drug is sort of fully precipitated. At that point, it will slowly redissolve based on the particle size. Um, and of course, we were able to fit mechanistic nucleation and growth parameters as well, shown on the right-hand side, where we have an exponential correction factor of 0.179 and Linfors Pram mold parameter of 0.151. Uh, so the options in DDD plus are the exact same ones as gastro plus. As I mentioned earlier, we have the same exact form input. You can modify the uh, precipitation model, either first order or mechanistic, uh, with the parameters um, that fit your data. You can also use the optimization module to fit these parameters, or you can simply enter them here, and you can also provide how you want the precipitate to form, whether you want it to form new particles, uh, grow first the first bin of particles only, or grow all particles. So um, this is all um, you know, matching gastro plus so that you can do IV, IVE activities, directly fit your parameters in DDD plus, translate them to gastro plus. And uh, so we need some in vivo data for itraconazole to compare our in vitro parameter, precipitation parameters with it. So, um, I hate to play favorites, but my favorite coworker in the Gastro Plus development group, Kay Zito, um, developed this model for itraconazole, uh, where she um, looked at DDI across nine formulations uh, with midazolam, and uh, you know also looked at three of the active metabolites: um, uh, the hydroxyitraconazole, ketoitraconazole, and ND itraconazole. Um, and from all these data sets, came up with a global set of precipitation parameters for the mechanistic nucleation and growth 
that best fit all the different uh, uh, data. Um, and so you can take a look at that poster. Um, it's, a, it's I think it's provided on our website. That's a, it's a good read. Um, but we use that model directly. And uh, uh, on the left-hand side, we use the uh, mechanistic precipitation parameters that were fit with DDD plus, the in vitro experiment. And we got um, similar results for the 200 mg fed Barone study. Uh, we're using single dose studies in this case, so we don't convolve um, precipitation with any other DDI effects. Um, on the right-hand side are the parameters that uh, Kay had found in her uh, presentation. And so both of these sets of parameters predict that for the fed state, at least, there's very little precipitation occurring. Now, when we move to the fasted state, uh, that's when we start seeing some precipitation and both sets of uh, in vitro and in vivo fitted parameters seem to um, uh, predict that. Um, so on the left-hand side is the mechanistic parameters from the in vitro fit, and on the right-hand side is the global parameters that Kay had found from her DDI modeling study. So at least in this case, um, the itraconazole biphasic precipitation assay seemed to provide parameters that were reasonable and close to values that worked um, for the in vivo uh, predictions. Your organic phase uh, does seem to provide enough capacity in this case to absorb a similar amount of drug to, the, uh, uh, to in vivo. So um, it seemed to work well in this case. We have found in the past, and we don't have time to go over these case studies, but in the past, we've seen that in vitro precipitation experiments with no absorptive phase um, have not translated good to in vivo predictions. So just simple transfer assays, um, uh, simple pre uh, precipitation assays have always overpredicted precipitation in vivo. And so that has led us to build models for the biphasic test and the artificial stomach duodenum um, test. And um, so hopefully in the future, you know, we'll see more instances of, of uh, better IVIVE. Um, in terms of uh, precipitation rate. So for case study two, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, IVIVC, virtual bioequivalence trials, and um, how to determine sort of a formulation design space, um, how to predict uh, you know, what ingredient um, percentages in a formulation will be bioequivalent with a reference formulation. So to do this, we're going to use uh, sodium valproate data from the Dutta paper in 2005, where they have five in vivo uh, studies uh, from fast, slightly fast, medium, slightly slow, and slow dissolving ER formulations. And the in vitro data for those is provided on the right-hand side. So uh, we have all the information necessary to build an IVIVC for sodium valproate, right? We have the plasma concentration data and the um, corresponding in vitro dissolution. So once we have this IVIVC, we need to also build an in vitro dissolution model that describes the effect of formulation on, and ingredients on the dissolution rate. So basically, we're, we're going to build a DDD plus model that will describe this graph on the upper right hand side, uh, the difference in composition of HPMC and lactose that leads to these different dissolution rates in this in vitro test. And then we're going to see how we can apply the dissolution model to determine the compositional ranges of lactose and HPMC that will be bioequivalent in vivo with the reference formulation. The reference formulation in this case is going to be the medium formulation, the medium release formulation. So um, just keep that in mind for the example coming up that the reference will always be that medium formulation. So quickly, um, we don't have time to go over all the details of the IVIVC, but we can at least define what it is and what we're doing at a, at a, at a course level here in Gastro Plus. But uh, an IVIVC is a predictive mathematical relationship describing an in vitro property of a dosage form, the rate of extent of drug release, and comparing that to an in vivo response, plasma concentration versus time data. So um, that's the typical type of uh, IVIVC point-to-point -point relationship you'll um, be looking at um, for something like a Wagner-Nelson or Lou Riggleman classical deconvolution. Um, so for the classical method, you'll simply be relating your in vitro dissolution to the amount entering systemic circulation, which is shown in this green box over here to the right. Um, but it doesn't tell you anything about how the drug got into systemic circulation, right? Um, you don't know any of the processes involved in how it 
how it got there. So in Gastro Plus, we provide a method that gives you a bit more information. Instead of relating the in vitro dissolution to systemic bioavailability, um, we use the full mechanistic model in Gastro Plus to deconvolute the in vitro dissolution versus the in vivo dissolution in the lumen. So what we do is take any nonlinear processes in the liver to determine the metabolism in the liver, any nonlinear non metabolism in the gut, along with any transport mechanisms, active transport, influx or efflux uh, in the enterocytes, and then uh, also passive diffusion, right, in the uh, paracellular or transcellular pathway. Um, we use all that information to determine what the amount dissolved in the lumen is, which is this red box over on the left. And we relate that in a point-to-point -point relationship with the in vitro dissolution. So this gives you additional information, right? You not only get the um, you, you not only get the prediction of plasma concentration from the in vitro dissolution, but you also get sort of the um, uh, realization of how your in vitro dissolution experiment relates with the in vivo dissolution. So you can modify your, you can do method development with that, right? So you can figure out if your in vitro experiment is bio relevant um, in comparison to in vivo dissolution. So it really gives you some additional information that the classical methods can't give you. And in Gastro Plus, you can uh, form a correlation, uh, uh, an IVIVC correlation quite easily. Um, you would open up the IVIVC module in Gastro Plus, select the, formulation, select the formulations you wish to build your IVIVC on. In, the, in this example, um, we use the, the slow, moderate, and fast, um, but you can select any of the formulations you want. Select the deconvolution method. We, you know, we still have the um, classical methods, but you know, we also have the mechanistic absorption model, um, which we're going to use in this case. And then once you've selected that, you can uh, deconvolute the in vivo dissolution rate for each of your formulations. Once the deconvolution is complete and you know the in vivo dissolution for all your formulations, then you can form a correlation between your in vitro dissolution and your in vivo dissolution. So that's the form correlation button. And you can select the correlation type, um, either a linear function, a power law function, a second order polynomial, or a third order polynomial. In this case, a second order works the best. Um, so once you have that, then it'll plot the in vitro release on the x-axis versus the in vivo release on the y-axis and the uh, black curve, which would be the IVIVC function that you fit to the uh, data or the formulations. And then you can see if it's valid, right? So you can then select the same formulations and use the IVIVC to re-predict the data and examine the internal predictability. Um, and you can see if it uh, passes the FDA criteria, which is, uh, I believe, 10% uh, average mean CMAX and AUC uh, prediction error, or less than 15% point prediction error for CMAX and AUC for each formulation. And then you could select um, external data sets. So you want a couple of data sets to then examine the external uh, predictions, um, and then you would see if those are less than 10% uh, uh, point prediction error for CMAX and AUC. If so, they pass the FDA criteria and they can be used in a, sub a submission. Um, otherwise, they're still useful for formulation development. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you, you could use the IVC in, in, in that case. So for the in vitro model, uh, in the same paper from Data, they had all the formulation composition for the fast, slightly fast, medium, slightly slow, and slow formulation. Um, so I think the formulations are anywhere from 20 to 40 percent HPMC, um, and then 8 to 26.2 percent lactose. Um, so uh, we used I, uh, we used DDD Plus to generate all of these formulations and predict. Uh, well, first we had to fit the model to a couple of these formulations and then predict um, the rest of the formulations. So in this case, we fit the fast and slow formulations, and then we predicted the rest of the formulations along with um, some uh, virtual trials, um, uh, virtual formulations that we'll describe here in the next uh, slide. Or not the next slide, but a couple slides from now. Uh, so for the release rate uh, for these different formulations, the key characteristic is the HPMC polymer. Um, so the molecular weight of the polymer is going to determine the release rate, right? The higher the molecular weight, the slower the drug is or the polymer is going to disentangle from the matrix. Uh, so um, in this case, they used HPMC K15M, 
Um, if you went to a, a higher molecular weight grade of HPMC, like K100, the release rate would be much slower because the polymer would disentangle at a much lower concentration. And so it would erode much slower. Um, so this is used with the Corsemeyer Pepys power law model to determine the um, dissolution rates of all these formulations. And so we have to fit the parameters to the model. So uh, we fit the power law parameter and, so, and the calibration constant for the API to predict the fast release and the slow release using the optimization model. Not predict, sorry, fit. And then we can predict the other formulations uh, as well as our virtual formulations, which we'll talk about here. So what we did once we had this model built for the um, in vitro dissolution, we set up uh, 12 uh, in silico uh, formulations uh, in blue, uh, different compositions of HPMC and lactose to explore the formulation space between 800 and 1200 mg tablet mass. And then we use DDD plus to simulate all these dissolution curves for all trial formulations. So um, on the left-hand side is the in vitro dissolution data boiled down into what is a T90 or the time for 90% of the drug to be released. Note the full curves are simulated and used in the simulations. This is, it's just hard to show all those curves on one slide. So I boiled it down into one sort of uh, contour plot for you. Um, that gets passed through the IVIVC we talked about um, earlier in the slides. So you know, we use the transformation function to transform the in vitro dissolution into in vivo dissolution. Um, once we have that in vivo dissolution, we can then make um, uh, sort of predictions of the plasma concentration profile using the gastro plus ACAP model. Um, and so uh, that's what we did. Um, and then we can look at the virtual bioequivalence of all, of all the different formulations in the space. So um, in the plot on the left, uh, the y-axis is lactose concentration in the formulation, and on the x-axis is the HPMC um, concentration in the formulation. And uh, for all of those, we're plotting the geo geometric Cmax um, for that uh, for the virtual trials. So we did um, uh, virtual uh, uh, virtual uh, trials in GastroPlus with uh, I believe it was uh, 12 subjects each um, to see what the bioequivalence would be for these formulations. And uh, uh, if we look at the top point, the blue point uh, at the edge of the space, um, that's at about 25% HPMC and 30% lactose. We can see that that barely passes uh, bioequivalent, so it's right on the edge of what we consider a sort of a safe design space, I guess, for the formulation uh, versus the reference formulation, which is the green point. Now, if we look at the other extreme where we have higher amounts of HPMC, if you start to get around 45% uh, weight percent HPMC, the geometric Cmax uh, drops below that sort of 80% level, and you start getting um, you start getting a bio -in equivalent. So we test the formulation out at the extreme there, uh, just over 50% HPMC, and you fail bioequivalence. Uh, the Cmax 90% uh, uh, um, confidence interval here is is around 73% to 86% in uh, the geometric uh, Cmax, uh, similar numbers for the AUC as well. So with this tool, um, you can convert the in vitro dissolution uh, modeling to the in vivo dissolution and predict the plasma concentration from that and the virtual bioequivalence and see you know, sort of what ranges of uh, formulation composition will be bioequivalent with a reference form. And so that's all we wanted to go through with these two examples. So um, I hope we've showed you how you can sort of reimagine your uh, design and analysis of in vitro studies. Uh, 50 companies globally use uh, DD Plus currently, as well as US and FDA, or US and China FDA. Uh, we provide models for most all uh, dosage forms and experimental conditions. So immediate delayed controlled release uh, products. Uh, we have different uh, apparatus, and uh, we believe this has, you know, we have significant momentum behind. Uh, the marriage of gastro plus and DDD plus for capturing IVIVE of uh, precipitation kinetics and product specifications. Um, so uh, we're going to get to questions in a second, but I wanted to go through a very, very quick example of another um, uh, example in gastro plus or, or usage of the tools from DDD plus and gastro plus. So what we're going to do is look at um, 
dissolution specifications really quickly, doing a virtual uh, a trial to look at the high and low end of a dissolution specification. Um, you know, sort of, sort of, you can like learn how to um, set product specifications for uh, your products. So we're going to open up DDD Plus really quick, open up a formulation um, that I've already created. We don't have time to create all of this from scratch. So I'm going to go straight to um, the models that I've already built. Um, and of course, it's the same formulation as the sodium valproate we just talked about, where we have um, HPMC as the rate controlling polymer, lactose, and we've entered in all this information. We've set up the dissolution method and you can run a single simulation to show that we have a model that fits the data. And um, this is the fast formulation. We'll go through and use the slow formulation for this example. So I'm just gonna um, change records to the slow release formulation. Um, we're gonna use the virtual trials functionality in DDD Plus to simulate the dissolution variability that you'd expect from the variability in your dissolution experiment. So to do that, you're going to go to the virtual trial functionalities in DDD Plus. You're going to select some parameters. So I'm just going to quickly select um, some parameters like the uh, release exponent, the um, tablet size parameters, uh, the amount of each API and excipient, as well as their calibration constant, and the media parameters, uh, volume, viscosity, and speed. Um, and I'm going to put a small CV in for these. Uh, the content uniformity of formulations is generally very small, right? Um, so, you know, the CVs are very low, 2% or so maybe. Um, so we'll select that and we'll say 30 points for the output. Um, we don't want too many points in the output. We'll click OK. And then we'll run these simulations and save them. So it's going to do 25 virtual lots of this formulation now and predict the dissolution rate for all of them and then come up with sort of the average profile and the um, uh, mean of the 90% confidence interval. And then it's also going to show the high and low end of the dissolution uh, curves expected based on this variability. So this is easy to output and, and, and use for input into a Gastro Plus simulation. All you have to do is right click and say export simulated data uh, to a DSD file. And then that data can be read into Gastro Plus. So I'm going to call this CR slow um, virtual trial and save this. And then we'll use this in Gastro Plus. So now I'm done with my DDD Plus modeling. I've, I've examined my high and low end of my dissolution specification. So I'm going to close this down, open up Gastro Plus now, and read in my, uh, uh, my profiles that I just created. So I'm going to open up, in this case, the Valproate database that I already have created. And I've already created records for the slow, the high end of the dissolution specification, the mean and the low end. So first we'll just look at the high end of the specification. I'm going to input in the dissolution data that I just generated from the um, DDD plus model. So I'm going to go to file load DSD and I'm going to go file open and I'm going to go to the DDD plus folder, which is DDD plus six Valpro eight. And I'm going to select when I saved the data from the graph in DDD Plus, it gave me the trial maximum, the mean, the median, and the min. So I'm going to select trial max here, right? Okay, so I have that, and it's read that in. I'm going to go file, save as, and accept the default name there. Now we need to convert that into in vivo dissolution. So I've already created an IVIVC for the data that I showed earlier. And so I can convert this to in vivo dissolution by going to file load CRD and then going to Tools, Calculate CRD from IVIVC. And so I can load the IVIVC file, and I've already created a, um, a IVIVC correlation, um, as I talked about in the slides earlier. And I converted the in vitro dissolution, the blue curve, into in vivo dissolution, the red curve. Then I can go File, um, or sorry, it's OK in this case. I can also fit Weibull parameters to this data, so that's a uh, what we need to do as well. So I'm just going to um, fit the Weibull parameters to this um, data set, click OK, and then go File, Save As, and Save. So now we can do the virtual bioequivalence, and I'm going to do the high end versus the low end specification. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Simulation tab and run a single simulation with the CRD Weibull function parameters I just generated 
for the in vivo dissolution. Uh, so we have that uh, as our fast form or high end of our dissolution specification. We can now run the population simulator and I'm gonna use the default parameters in this case and just run a quick, I'm gonna do a very small sample size in this case to save time, just six subjects. And we'll save that. Um, and so it'll run six virtual trials for six uh, virtual subjects in this case. And so we're already on subject number three here currently. Subject four, subject five, and um, should be completed now. So we've run the high end of the dissolution specifications, and we have you know a population simulation for that for that formulation. Um, we can then go and look at the low end of the specification and see if those are bioequivalent, right? Um, so again, I'm going to run a single simulation to load the Weibull parameters that have already been created. I already created the CRD and DSD from the simulation, um, the virtual trial in DDD+. Plus. Um, so I've read those parameters in. I can go back to the population simulator, click load previous, and load the last subject population. Well, now I'm going to do a crossover study, a virtual bioequivalence trial between the high end of the dissolution specification and the low end, and click start and run, and it'll run that comparison to see if they're bioequivalent. In this case, they're probably not going to be bioequivalent because I've used such a small population size and the dissolution rates are quite different. You would obviously want to run this on a larger population size. We just don't have time in this example. So um, we're on the sixth subject and now I can click new plot. And now you can see um, the pink curve is the high end of the dissolution specification. The green curve is the low end of the dissolution specification. And then we can compare the bioequivalents by clicking compare plotted population results. And in this case, it barely fails uh, bioequivalence on the AUC. Um, like I said, the likelihood is that you would probably pass if you use more subjects. But um, any, anyway, this hopefully this shows how you would look at dissolution specifications in uh, Gastro Plus and DDD Plus. And um, now I'll pass it over to Cheryl Ann uh, for questions. And please contact us at www.simulations.plus.com. We have a user group uh, uh, there, uh, links there as well, and our emails are in the presentation. So um, uh, it was nice talking uh, to all of you, and um, I hope the questions, we can answer your questions here, and I'll turn it over to Cheryl Ann. Thanks, Jim. Before we begin the Q&A session, um, is everyone aware that we make the software license available free of charge for teaching purposes? We'll give you a few seconds to answer.